What's giving Joe Klinerman the most consternation to stay up at nights for the next two weeks? Um, I just want to make sure that we continue to develop depth. I think that's one of the things that we are, uh, are doing a good job of right now. You know, we're maintaining uh, our health. We're, we're getting uh, better. Some of these younger guys are coming along that we were hoping are coming along. I think we're on, on pace right now. Uh, it's just the, the transition of, uh, you know, you go through all spring, all fall camp, or it's just us against us. Now it's the transition of seeing different styles of offense, you know, seeing some different things. And we're seeing a lot of different pictures from our offense, but, you know, still, I don't know if we're exactly what we see week to week in the league. So just kind of transitioning our mindset into, into what we're going to see week to week. What's impressed you the most so far? I think uh, the, the speed with which we're playing right now. Uh, defensively, really both sides of the ball. The competition has been phenomenal, but the speed that we're playing, we've never played at this speed in practice in fall camp. Um, and, you know, part of it uh, a year ago may have been because of the newness of the system. Um, part of it may have been personnel, but right now I think guys are playing fast and confident, and I'm excited about it. What are you seeing from Deuce Green? Oh, he's, he's been outstanding. He's been uh, a leader as we thought he might be. You know, I think sometimes when guys get in that role, they feel comfortable. And I don't, I don't get that sense from him. I, I feel like every day he's still trying to achieve. He's still playing physical. He's not, you know, um, slowing down on things that maybe sometimes guys get that uh, uh, entitlement feeling. I don't. He doesn't have that. Uh, that's what impresses me about him. He's to that stage and he's still pushing himself. I feel like you're figuring out the safety position. Yeah, we've got a lot of competition in that room. That's going to continue throughout the year, but it's really uh, going to continue certainly up in South Dakota. Um, you know, we've got, uh, I mean, I, I feel like we've struck gold with Drake Cheatham, uh, Josh Hayes, Kobe Savage as three transfers that are that are all very, very much in the mix. And, um, you know, obviously with TJ Smith and Sincere Mason, Hunter Henry, some of these guys that have been in the program, I think we're, we've got some depth there that we haven't had. Coach, you talk about this is as fast you feel like you've played. Does that just have to do with the comfort, comfortability in the system, or do you, like you mentioned, personnel? What between those two, which, which would you say? I think it's, I think it's two. I think, I think uh, three, threefold. I think personnel is one thing. I think we're just more athletic than what we've been, uh, particularly in the back seven. Um, I think secondly, you bet it's, it's a comfort level with the system and, and what we're doing. I think we've streamlined that somewhat. You know, a year ago at this time, you got to remember. We were still transitioning from four down to three down. You know, I, I don't know if I've ever told this story, but you know, when we went into Stanford, we were all in on the uh, three down stuff. But man, if that stuff wasn't working, we were, we were going right back to, to what we'd been. We had that greased up and ready to go too. Um, you know, we don't, we're, we're all in on what we're doing right now. In fact, that's evolved a little bit. And then the third thing, I think the, the unforeseen thing is I think guys are playing smart situational football. And one of the things I really appreciate about Coach Kleiman, and he's gonna put us in you know, two minute situations, four minute situations, backed up, you know, third down of all varieties, you know, just a bunch of different game situations that I think our guys really understand and maybe in the past haven't understood to that degree. What have you seen from Josh Hayes? I know you had a chance to work with him when you had North Dakota State. Yeah. Now that he's here, how have you seen him grow as a player? Well, I've seen him grow as a leader. I've seen him, I'm seeing, uh, I mean, I, I think unquestionably he's one of the guys, uh, strongest voices in the defensive room, even though he's not a, not a loud talker. I think he's unquestionably one of the, uh, one of the strongest uh, souls we have in there. He is, um, you know, we, we started him out at corner because that's what he played at North Dakota State, and we're going to use him as a free safety um, because some of the skill sets that that guy needs to have are, are nickel type skill sets, and that's probably where he, you know, where he best fits. You know, somebody that's physical enough to be in the run fit and do those things, but still somebody that can play man coverage in the slot, and I think that's where, uh, where he really excels. He's, 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 I'm excited about Josh. I think uh, Kobe was able to hit the ground running here. Well, I think part of it is part of the reason why we recruited him is because he's a football junkie. You know, he is. Uh, I, I, there's a group of about four guys that are, you know, in my office all of the time. And I say all of the time. I mean, they're in there more than I'm in there. And he's one of those guys, just always wanting to know about ball. Always, there's nothing that he doesn't know, but I think he's trying to get it to the point where he, he can't get anything wrong. And I think that that's what's pushing him forward a little bit. He plays so hard, and he's, he's super intelligent, and, and kind of like we were talking about Deuce. I don't think he's satisfied with where he is or uh, satisfied that he might be uh, a guy that plays significantly for us. He wants to be you know, the best in the Big 12, and I think he's on his way. Is that four down still a option? Should the situation uh, arise? We, we have the ability to do it, yep. Um, we've got... Uh, um, you certainly have the personnel to do it, uh, particularly at an end. I think that's a really crowded room for us right now, uh, as far as uh, guys that have ability. You know, everybody knows about Felix and, and Nate and Jalen Pickle and those guys because they've played a lot. But 
guys like Brendan Mott have come on, you know, uh, Cody Stuffelbean have come on. I mean, guys that maybe we didn't anticipate playing at the level that they're playing at are, are phenomenal right now. And so uh, we're going to try to find ways to get our best people on the field. I'll just say that. Are you as comfortable with the depth on the interior of the defensive line as you were last year? Um, you know, last year I felt like we had um, a little bit more proven depth um, because Tim Horn had played some, you know, where he was coming from. You know, now it's a little bit more unproven in that uh, obviously D. Hintz has played in games. You know, everybody knows about Eli Huggins. I, you know, feel like he's the best in the league. Uh, D. Hintz has played in, in games and feel really good about him. Now what's behind him? You know, Damian Ilalio, um and Uso, th those guys are really good players with very bright futures, but we haven't seen them in, a, in the heat. So we'll see how that uh, plays out over the first few weeks of the season. Last year you gave up the fewest points of any K-State team since 2003. And statistically, you did the same in several other categories. Can this defense be even better this year? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. I mean, we are, you know, we look at that, and, and we as coaches see a bunch of missed opportunities. You know, we, we, we won games last year and played well on defense because we played really hard. We weren't right a whole lot. I mean, we, we still had a lot to learn. I think even as coaches, I think there were things that we didn't do correctly. And uh, in, in reflecting on that throughout the spring, throughout the summer, I think the um, only way to go is up. Mission Drake, what, what, what has he done that's going to really stand out? Got? Drake is one of the most intelligent football players I've ever been around, super instinctive. Um, you know, another one of those guys that's in the office all of the time. You know, another one of those guys that's just a football junkie and loves it. He's physical. He can play man coverage. Um, he plays good visual zones. I mean, he, there's not a skill set that he can't do. Um, He's a great leader, a great communicator. I mean, he just, uh, what a slam dunk for us to, to get him. Are there any offensive players that have kind of given you fits in the past few weeks that maybe you didn't foresee coming in? Uh, I don't know. This, this new kid, Martinez, isn't that bad. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, no, I think, we're, I think we're getting a lot better up front. You know, I think that's, uh, that's evident. Um, you know, um, of course, you know, uh, the, the usual suspects of Deuce and Phil and Malik Knowles. And, I mean, yeah, they, they've got some... They've got some issues. I, I, I've been really impressed. You know, you'd have to ask Colin about this, but I've been really impressed with DJ Giddens. I think he's running hard and doing a lot of good things, and it's good to see some of these young guys stepping up. When it comes a couple uh, more. When the season gets here and you start game planning for other teams, as a defensive guy, how much more difficult does it make things when you have so many quarterback transfers just all over the country? Yeah. I think uh, I think coaches have identities, and I think we kind of try to stick to that, and and you know the modifications that might come out of that. Uh, meaning, you know, sometimes they might be stuck. They, they might be a big quarterback run team, but they don't have a, a quarterback that can run. So naturally, it's going to be the same style of offense, but instead of running, they may throw an RPO. You know, um, I think we're, we're uh, um, there, again, as I mentioned before, there isn't anything we haven't seen from our offense. I mean, we have all different kinds of schemes and formations, and, you know, we're seeing a lot of things and having to match those things up, and that's, that's preparing us for what we need to see. Last year, you used uh, uh, pickle at one of the defensive ends. Do you feel like uh, maybe you're, you've got some guys now that fit, fit the system better as far as body type? I know yeah. they have outlets game a little bit. Yeah, we, yeah we, we, we feel good about uh, Nate and Felix, uh, guys that we say are smaller guys in there, even though they're not, um, you know, 250, 255 pound guys. But um, we feel good about those guys mixing it up inside. But if we need to get bigger people out there, we have the ability to do that. You know, Jalen Pickle, a Cody Stuffelbean, those guys are guys that are playing some defensive end, but they're playing some nose as well for us and playing some inside things. And so, um, you know, we're, we're going to continue to use him in multiple uh, positions, Jalen specifically, and, um, you know, just try to get our best people out there for the situation.